But who are you? That means that your name should cause some kind of terror in heaven. And if your name carries no weight among the devil, you're wasting your time. Oh, y'all didn't want to hear me when I said that. He said, Paul, I know. He separated Paul from Jesus. Because he said, you know what? When I see Paul, I see Jesus. When I see Jesus, I see Paul. Mm. See, there is no excuse for the enemy to have free course in our lives, in our churches, in our homes, in our communities. We have the authority to use the name of Jesus and cast out the enemy. We are ordained to be disruptors. Somebody say disruptors. We talk so much about the devil, how the enemy is trying to sow discord and he's starting stuff. But what about us? What about us? You know, you know, we talk about the devil, we had a we had a good thing going. The devil came in and ruined it. How many times the devil have a good thing come going and we come in and ruin it? It's gonna be quiet in here. How many times the devil had a good plan going, but all of a sudden the old crazy Christians came around? Uh, I, I had this thing, I had the whole section of this port of Halliburg. It was under my authority, but as soon as you showed up, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I, I had this whole section of this job messed up, but as soon as you showed up, you so discord in my plan. Yeah. Don't look at me like I got two heads up here. That's okay. It's the truth. True. How come when I say, you know what? I don't want to come and disrupt his plan. Yeah. He messes my stuff up all the time. I don't want to come and mess up his stuff up too. Yeah. You see, God wants us to be whole and not missionary and apostolic power. Matthew 28 and 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. This is the missionary power of the people of God. We are commissioned to go out and teach and baptize in the name of Jesus. The apostolic power is to preach Jesus. Somebody say preach Jesus. Jesus. I've been preaching some stuff. I preach some good messages, I believe. But good what God told me, told me, told me, go back to preaching Jesus. Had a man of God to call me. He said, man of God, he said, look, God, I put in my heart to preach Jesus. I want to preach Jesus. When I preach Jesus to people, I introduce them to the opportunity to have the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 30, 37 says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. It said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, y'all should know this by heart, repent, someone said repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for it is promised unto you, and to your children, and those that are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. When they preach Jesus, people got saved. We preach blessings, don't mean somebody get saved. We preach everything else, then I'm going to say, but when we preach the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus, people get saved. Now, the preaching of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost, it manifests itself in growth. Growth. Then, verse 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, that's the Bible, right? What's going on there? What's going on? Can I get be real in the house? The Bible says you preach me. They got added 3,000 souls in one day. And, 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 and the doctrine that they preach, it produces results. The Bible says in verse 42, and they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking the bread and in prayers. And fear came upon all, every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And then the Bible says that he multiplied. Verse 47 says, Praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church how much? Right here, y'all. How much? Amen. They could not even keep and contain the amount of people who came to God. It looks like I added daily such as should be saved. Jesus wants everybody saved. We have got to stop thinking that so-and-so ain't going to never get right. So-and-so, she, she just out there. She ain't going to never get right. And we say, yeah, God wants everybody to say, but do we believe it? Do we believe it? Think about the worst person you know right now. Can you see him say it? God began to put in my heart. I said, Lord, they said they so rough and, and their heart is so uh, their heart is so hardened right now. And I had to be honest sometimes. So Lord, I don't even see it happening. And God said, Daniel, and we, we say, no, we say, great, you know, uh, uh, narrow is the way to, to righteousness. But you know, few to be defined. But God said, I want everybody on their way. Can I prove it to y'all? 
In 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish. In that Bible, he said, I want everybody to say I want that drug dealer to say I want that person who is bothering you the most in your life, I want them saved too. I want the worst person, that the biggest atheist, that doesn't even believe in me, I don't want them to perish either. He said, but I want all to come to repentance. This is what God says. Do we act like that though? Here's the Bible. Now, now here we go. Let's go. Do, do we have to be, now we have to be honest and ask ourselves as the body, are we whole? I got about 15 minutes. Are we whole? Given what the Bible just said about what we should be doing, are we whole? Do we have it together? Are there sick among us that should be healed? Or are we blaming that sickness on them? I'm going to be real in the house. No, we do sometimes, we blame it on them. I was talking to somebody who was diabetic and, and we say, well, just lose some weight. But guess what? He said, man, this runs my family. Mama was diabetic. Daddy was diabetic. Granddaddy was diabetic. And you know what? I, I, it's, it's a man of God. I can call his name. But it's a man I, I pray that he, he healed. He's a small guy. He's about like me. Diabetic. And what we do, we become pharisaical sometimes. Who did sin? Oh, I'm going to be real now. It may be quiet. I'm going to preach it. Who did sin? And we put people's sickness on them sometimes. You know what? We blame the sickness on them because we become like the disciples. They brought them to us and we couldn't heal them. So if we can't heal them, it's got to be your fault. Am I in the house? Sometimes that's exactly what we do, and people don't even want to come up to the altar. You know what we're going to say? We're going to say, you got to get your faith up. No, you get your faith up. I got faith because I came up here. If I didn't have no faith, I wouldn't be up here. No, 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 I want you to believe. Y'all better hear me. You to believe that I'm going to be saved. You want you to believe I'm going to be healed. Or we hold. The Bible says, I also want you to hear this, all the demonic forces working freely around us sometimes. And sometimes, can I be real, through us. The devil uses some of us inside here too. You don't want to hear that. Pastor, that ain't, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, 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 the devil uses you sometimes too. We say some stuff that we shouldn't be saying. Do some stuff we shouldn't be doing. Hold some stuff against people we shouldn't be holding against them. We become envious of people. The devil using you too. And I'm mad. I'm going to tell you right now. The devil to use me sometimes too. And I had to repent. Now if you want to sit me down, sit me down. Take my license, take my license. It's the truth. Now I ain't cheating or nothing like that. I've said some stuff I shouldn't say. I have. I got mad, and the Holy Ghost said, shut up! I said, no, nah, I'm the apostle baker's son. I'm the high priest in this house. And guess what happened? He said, yeah, I want a discord in your house. See, if y'all were together, y'all be praying, y'all be moving some mountains. Y'all be a power couple. But see, I want y'all together, because the Bible said, a threefold cord, a three, uh, the three, a straight cord is not easily broken. So that's me, my wife, and that's God. And so what God said, so the devil said, look, I got to get one of y'all out of the way. Oh, y'all better hear this. So what I got to do, I got to have you not praying for her. You coming against her. She not praying for you. And you can't get nothing done. And I wanted to get some discord started. But you were waiting on the witch to come to your house. Huh? You were waiting on that witch to come to your house and put some kind of voodoo on your house. Because you want to see that. You can cast that out. But you can get the devil out of your own self sometimes. We trying to look for the warlock. Oh, so the Jezebel, she trying to come to me and my wife. No, it's you. You know what, can I be real with y'all? I've been saved for a while. I'm not saying I'm above reproach. I'm not saying I'm above sin. Anything can happen in my life. But I ain't got a little too much, a little, a little smarter to watch for somebody in a tight dress. Y'all be trying to stop passing. Don't look up my pastor like that. You got to like, she ain't dressed right. She, I, I got a little smarter than that. I got a little smarter. So the devil know if he gonna get me, he gotta come sideways. You know, he, he a little too smart. He ain't gonna be trying to get no numbers in church now. But if he gonna get me, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blow this up from within. 
what we think is going to happen, he's going to blow it up between somebody coming in. No, no, no. He said, I'm going to blow it up from within. It's going to implode. You ever heard of explode? No, I'm going to make it implode. Y'all ain't heard me inside of here. Can I be real that some of us inside of here, the devil use us? And then we do, we're not whole. Mm. All the miracles being done through the people of God. All people being saved and filled with the Holy Ghost on a continual, someone say continual. Continual basis of the church is the body whole enough to be used for the work of the ministry. Are we healing the sick? The people say, if you sick, go to follow up with God out of her and they can heal you over there. Is that our reputation? I'm being real now. Are we casting out devils? Somebody got a, a problem, a demonic force out of their life. Can we cast it out? Oh, like the, de like the, like the disciples, we are powerless. Oh, y'all better y'all come to all of us out here. Are we, are, are we preaching the gospel to sinners and causing them to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Do we care about sinners? Oh, if not, we are sick and we are not whole. And if we are sick, we need to stop ignoring our lack of wholeness and go back to the position to be made whole so we can we do what we need to be doing and that we, that we cannot do because of our sickness. So, so here's the question. Are you sick of it? I had to sit down in my house. I got sick of it. I got sick of coming to church and not seeing things happen. I got sick of coming to Bible study and not seeing anything happen. I got sick of praying for people and they still sick. I take it personal. Yes. Maybe y'all say, oh, it's okay. No, no, I take it personal. I've been praying for some people to be saved. They ain't saved yet. I take it personal. All right, I believe it. You will never get healed from what you can tolerate. Some of y'all got some sickness in your body right now. You've been sick for years. But you learned how to live with it, didn't you? You went to nobody doctor. You went to no specialist. Because you learned how to live with it. You will never change what you can tolerate. It's real. If we can, if you can tolerate your condition, you will never go to the doctor to be healed. It is only when your condition causes you enough discomfort and the pain that you're going to seek help. God is waiting on us to get sick of it. He's waiting on us to get sick of having members in the body that are suffering from illnesses that can be healed when the body starts to fast and starts to pray. I'm fasting this summer. I'm not fasting for me. I'm fasting for some healings. I'm tired of laying my hands on people. I'm tired of laying my hands on people and send them right back to their seat. And then God said, the same spirit that was in Jesus is supposed to be inside of me. And the Bible says that some things go not out except through fasting and prayer. I'm going to holler at y'all. I'm going to holler at me. I'm getting on me. I'm tired of it. I am sick of it. And we must get sick of praying a polite prayer and sending people back to their seat sick. We need to pray with faith and pray with fervency. We need to go back to the old saints. They will pray until they saw something. You said they told them, so how you feel? I'm a little better. They keep on praying. How, how, how you feel now? It's a little bit better. I couldn't lift it this far. I couldn't lift it this far. They keep on praying. Oh, they going to pray until you lift your hand all the way up. And you say, well, pastor, that ain't the word. Jesus prayed for a man. The man was blind. He said, how do you see? He said, I see men as trees. They glory. I don't see them all the way. Jesus didn't say, well, go home and work on that. No, no. He said, I pray for your kid right now. That's right. We need to get sick of people being sick. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of illness up on my body. I've been to the doctor. They know my name, no, no, no. Send me emails and everything. I said, Lord have mercy. I ain't never been this sick in my whole life. You know what we do? We don't want to pray sometimes. Oh, y'all better hear me. Because we got insurance. Until we get to a point where they go to the doctor and they can't heal us, now we want to go to God. No, I'm going to pray in the beginning. I want to keep my money. God, you may be trying to rebuke this, this to the bar and try to come against my life. Because the, the, the doctor sometimes is a devourer. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's real. Oh, you heard me? They want you to come back for this and come back for that. Come back for this. They get paid every time you come to show up. I said, no, 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 no. I know Dr. Jesus inside of here. Yeah. Hey. Get this. 
We need to pray for our brothers and sisters like we are sick of them being sick. We need to pray like we are sick of them, of the enemy causing them to suffer and to be in pain. We must get sick of the enemy having free course in our services, in our homes, in our communities. We must take it personal whenever the devil decides to rear his head. You must take it personal. You see, how dare the enemy have the audacity, I know I'm going with this, and the unmitigated call to act up in our services. How dare you? All these Christian people that's out here, you have the audacity to act up in this service? How dare, how, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Y'all incur me this idea. You see, you see, he sometimes act up in business and department meetings. I'm going to preach because there's nothing but us that's out here. He should not be acting up when we are trying to have a meeting. Y'all ain't want to hear that? Because sometimes we act up through y'all. We try to carry somebody else. I know it's you. Take the wrong thing personally. You don't understand small things. Y'all better hear me. And the small things that you don't get, don't get your way. The devil's going to get me toward using you. That's why we should start with prayer. Uh, in prayer in the middle of it. And prayer at the end of it. That's quiet. I'm going to say what I got to say. It should not be that the people of God cannot have meetings without some kind of problem inside the meeting. Somebody say amen. amen. It should not be. We got used to it. We ain't sick of it yet. That's why I keep happening. Amen. So if pastor ain't here, everything go crazy. Amen. We had an issue one time on the bus, on the van. Some crazy stuff happened on the van. I'm on the ride van. I said, Lord, it should be enough safe on that van to say, no, no, we ain't going to have this. We going to support pastor. Amen. We didn't come for this. We didn't come for all this mess inside this van. Y'all right. better hear me. Right. We didn't come for all this mess in this meeting. Right. That's the devil, and he's not going to use me. He ain't going to use you. Right. And you know, we've gotten used to it. Our kids think it's commonplace because we as adults, we've dropped the ball. We are sick and don't want to realize that we're sick. Yeah. We are not whole. It is not God's idea. He says, follow peace with all men. Holiness without, no man shall see God. Y'all better hear me. The only reason that he is showing up in our services, in our meeting, is because we're not sick of it. Well, I'm sick of it. I am sick of us not being discussed without falling out. We can discuss things and not fall out. Me and my brother, my brother is my brother. We don't agree on everything, but that's my brother. Still be my brother. I don't care what he say to me. I don't care what goes on. That's my brother. Amen. And the problem is inside the house of God, we don't see just like brothers and sisters. That's real. That's real. Do you? It don't matter. I'm gonna say what I gotta say. And we, you know, what's so interesting. We big and bad around saints. Be little church mice outside the world. You know why? In the world, they knock out. We say something saints, we won't say no, no sinners out there. You know why? Because we, we, we know we ain't stupid. Can be real? That's what I ain't gonna know my name. That's what I say, brothers inside of here. Y'all can say what y'all wanna say to some, some of your brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. You won't say to them, no. Why can't we treat each other the same way? I have learned, I gotta treat my wife the way I treat y'all. I can't speak nice to the, the coach that's my wife. Something wrong in it. Oh, I'm gonna get on out of here. We gotta get to the point we're sick of it. Uh, the devil, the, the devil is trying to get us to fall out. We discuss that's the devil. The devil's a lie. I can disagree with you without falling out with you. We are two different people. We see things different. We we come from different experiences. We don't always see things the way. But guess what? I'm not gonna let my disagreement make me fall out with you. There's people preaching against pastors right now that disagree on 10% of what they preach. And they got an unsaved friend who drunk, who high, who run around, who go to the club, and they get along with them crazy. But 10%, he baptized them five sons of the Holy Ghost. So y'all can't even talk no more. They don't do this in their church. Y'all can't even talk no more. Preaching about other preachers. Y'all better hear this. Preaching about somebody else, and then you got some unsaved friends that you ignore a lot around. 
right in the house. Just cuss. That's what they want to say. But then you let somebody in church miss a one scripture the wrong way. Mm. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Uh, the devil has no victory. Uh, the devil gets no space. I can disagree and still be a team player. Still be a team player, man. We did this. this I, I, ain't, I ain't the best. I, my, my, my president in my, my job, I'm learning a lot about administration and leadership. You know what? She tells all her people on the executive council, come to the meeting with three with three ideas every time. You better come with three new ideas. We were, we were right now, all the stuff that we have, like all the stuff that they've been able to do is because she allows ideas. That does not mean she's going to go with all of them. Some of them good, some of them ain't good. But she wants you to at least be able to say them. And you can't take it personal if they don't do it. But what we do, we take our ball and we go going home. That, that, that's the person who can't play basketball with the body ball. The one who can't play basketball has the best ball, basketball, don't they? Yeah. That was me, one that had a nice leather ball. And so what they say, if you don't pick me on your team, y'all ain't playing. Taking my ball, get back in my car, I'm going home. We do the same thing in these, these meetings sometimes. If you don't do what I want you to do, you ain't getting my participation. participation. I'm preaching to the church today, y'all. That's the devil. You should not be like that. Paul and Peter didn't get along, but they still were not preaching against each other. Paul said, they said, so many people preaching against you. They said, you ain't this, you ain't that. Paul said, I don't care as long as Jesus being preached. Amen. Thank you for those two claps. I'm sick of it. Where's our power that he is not afraid to show up in our midst and stir up trouble? I'm sick of it and 